Hello nerds, thank you for watching Generally Nerdy. This is your week in nerddom comic books edition for the week of June 11th, 2018. But this is supposed to be the gaming edition, isn't it? Well, with E3 this week, I'm switching them so I can I have more time to edit the gaming edition, so gaming will be up tomorrow. Today, we're talking comic books. Quiet on the set, rolling. Hi, I am Bitsy Tellick. Hey, I'm Hale Appleman. I'm Walter Kane. I'm Rene Aubergenois. Odo on Deep Space Nine. Michael Dorn, Lieutenant Commander of War, Star Trek The Next Generation. Uh, come and see me and hear me and talk to me and listen to me talk about myself. Hey man, this is Kevin Smith, often considered generally nerdy, and you are listening to what is often considered generally nerdy. On generally nerdy. You're listening to Generally Nerdy. Generally Nerdy. Generally Nerdy. Before we jump into the news, guys, we have to get into this week's sponsor. We got a new sponsor this week. Not one that's really paying me yet, but it will. This one will. This one actually will, besides the t-shirts. Those pay me when you guys buy them. This week's sponsor has been brought to you by both Mercari and Poshmark. This is a very strange sponsor, you say. It's true, but... Uh, my girlfriend and I are selling a bunch of stuff trying to clear out our house because uh, she has collected clothes since she was probably 15 years old. So she has a lot of vintage stuff, I'm putting pictures up here, they're cycling through. Check them out. I'll leave a link to her Mercari and her Poshmark down in the description so you can go buy some of this vintage stuff. Any of you ladies out there, uh, we will be selling a couple of my things as well. So there will be guy stuff kind of nerdy stuff as you might imagine but again this episode is brought to you by both mercari and poshmark links in the description let's hit the news oh whoa, 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 whoa. before we get into the news also guys we have to do one more thing next week is denver come or this weekend rather is denver comic-con so next week we will not be doing the week in nerddom we will have how-to con videos we will have adventures in photography we will have some cosplay stuff I'm gonna try and finish getting all of my interviews edited and posted from the last conventions that we were at. Uh, the Mushroom Head episode should be going up. All kinds of stuff will still be happening, just no week in nerddom. Okay, now let's get into the news. First things first, we're spoiling Batman issue number 48. So if you have yet to read it and you plan on reading it, then skip forward a couple of minutes. But we're going to spoil it a little bit. Not major spoilers, but an interesting spoiler. Uh, we're into the wedding. We just did the, the, I think we're an issue before the actual wedding, if I'm remembering correctly. We might be two issues before the actual wedding. But it was announced in 48 who Batman's best man is going to be. Well, if you were thinking logically, you would think, A, it's going to be somebody from the Bat, Bat family, and B, it's likely to be a Robin. Uh, so, Tim Drake, uh, Damian Wayne, potentially, uh, Jason Todd, somebody is going to be Batman, or is going to be the best man for Batman, and, yeah, you'd be wrong. <laughs> it's Superman. Superman's gonna be, which kind of makes sense, because they have a longer history, technically, because they knew each other before Batman had a Robin, so there's that going on. Um, I don't know, I just, I just wanted to bring this up, because I thought it was interesting that he chose Superman. When they effective i mean like they had the 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 silly date episodes which were funny and kind of gave us a different way to look at the the bruce and clark but uh this was a little bit of a shock to me i'm not gonna lie that's all we're talking about though for this issue we're gonna kick on next to walking dead uh issue 180 just came out and this is the beginning of the new world order story arc this one changes the game uh and and here's why because up until now everything happening in the walking dead is tribalism you have one leader and you have a very small faction of people that follow that one leader regardless as in the new world order we have a city we have a very large established location that keeps getting larger that has 
uh, has sports teams. It has uh, elected officials. It has an actual police force, or something resembling a police force, anyway. So, a uh, military is, is probably more appropriate. Um, this this just changes the dynamic. We went from settlements of maybe maybe a couple hundred people to now something that has approximately a hundred thousand people in it. So before we would catch maybe a, a, a small handful of people who didn't really have names in a new settlement that we found. Whereas now, the majority of the people in this city are not going to be named. They're not going to be a part of the story. They're going to be back the background. And that just is a very different take on the post-apocalypse and zombies. So it's just the dynamic is shifting. And I feel like this is Kirkman getting tired of that same old all right let well let's introduce another bad guy and then at the end of the story arc we either kill him or convert him so i i dig it i think this was a brilliant move this is going to ensure the life of the comic whereas the show might be falling apart next on the list is gamestop yeah we're talking about gamestop in the comics video i didn't get confused GameStop is getting into the comic book game. Uh, somebody leaked pictures, which you're seeing. I, I don't know which side of the screen it's going to be on at the moment, but it's going to be up on the screen right about now. Uh, you should be seeing on the screen the comic books. They're going to be primarily, it looks like, carrying stuff from the big two, so DC and Marvel. Though there are a couple of image titles on the on uh, in the leaked photos and like uh oni press title as well which if you don't know oni press is who does invader zim that's yonan vasquez 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 uh that's his comic book uh imprint so that's probably all they're going to carry is zim they're not going to carry the more random oni press stuff but very likely it'll be zim and maybe like trades of johnny uh johnny the homicide maniac but so that this this changes a little bit of a of a, a, a dynamic with the within the industry because there have been major retailers in the past, namely Hastings and uh, Barnes and Noble and Borders back in the day that carried comic books. Um, but it's it's always been or it's mostly been a couple of the issues and on heavy heavy on trades um so the collections is really what they're selling because they're book outlets by and large hastings was the only one that really you could get individual issues like very large selection of individual issues uh barnes and noble anymore carries maybe a dozen or so different uh story arcs that are going on detective comics you know the kind of the staples the big the big titles that are happening in the big two they don't and they don't go outside of the big two by and large they they'll get into archie comics and whoever does the simpsons but that's kind of their 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 breadth of comic books whereas gamestop theoretically because video gaming is going the way of digital so theoretically they have a little bit more space to display <clears throat> they have a little bit more space to display the comics than say barnes and noble would so eh, that is my question to you guys is this going to affect local comic book shops or are local comic book shops already being negatively affected by the digital turn and by the comicsology being so easy to order from? Uh, is this? I, I honestly feel like GameStop is going to very negatively affect local mom and pop shops. But the fact that the the local owned stores do those other uh, labels, do IDW and do Image and do Vertigo, which is coming back, by the way. DC's Vertigo imprint is coming back. Uh, I That's what's going to keep them afloat. They're not, I, I honestly think they're not going to be as, or maybe I'm wrong, maybe this could be a boon for the industry as a whole because it's going to get more people buying books, which then is going to get more people interested in 
uh, other things that are in the comic book form, so then they have to go to the local shops to get the the better written stuff, or the more more deep stuff, or the more arty stuff, or the more, you know, whatever their niche is, they can't find that at a major retailer like GameStop will be, but they can find it at a local comic book shop. So, I don't know, I which which side are you on? What's, what's going to happen with the industry with GameStop? Or is it going to be the third option, and nothing's going to happen, GameStop's just going to eventually go out of business anyway? That's also an option too, but what do you guys think? Let's talk about that down below in the comments. Next on the list, we're talking about Justice League number one. Very minor, minor spoilers, so if you haven't read it, you can honestly watch the rest of this and it won't, I'm not going to ruin the story. I just wanted to talk about the interplay with the Justice League in the first couple pages of this book. Uh, they're all trying to do their best Batman voice. We've all done it before. We've all done the, I'm Batman. You know, you get your, gr your gruff, you're trying to either in uh, 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 imitate Christian Bale or uh, Kevin Conroy. You're, you're doing that. <laughs> so everyone's done it. It's it, always a joke thing. And they're making it a joke in the first couple pages of this new uh, Justice League book. And it's... This is something that the DC movie universe will never understand. This is giving levity to our superheroes. It's not always doom and gloom and darkness and and everything has to be stoic and meaningful and whoa. They're people. Granted, they're super powered people. They're meta people, if you will. But they're still people. And like this is, I, I think this is brilliant. And this is what is missing in the movies is the fact that, yeah, they can riff on each other a little bit. They went, a, they swung a little too far on that side with the uh, uh, Justice League movie, which was oh so bad. Uh, they were trying to make up for the fact that they hadn't done that before, and uh, they were doing it all at once. I just little things like this, nuance. That's what you need to make a successful movie or successful franchise on any medium. And that's something that the writers at the, on the comic book side understand, but not the writers on the movie side. Though, with Jeff Johns helming the movie side these days, hopefully that's going to change. And then, to round off this week's episode, we're talking about our two homework assignments from last week. First up, out the gate, is Spider-Man number 800. Real quick spoilers. This is just going to be real, real quick stuff. Uh, we got... The death of Flash Thompson, maybe. I mean, they did attend his funeral, so he might be dead, at least for now. Uh, Spider-Man rejoins uh, with the Venom symbiote, which was kind of unexpected. And Flash didn't take... It was just very, very... A lot of stuff happened in 800. A lot of stuff happened in 800. Uh, Doc Ock saves Aunt May. And, like... I just so and then and then we get a tease that maybe we're going to see the uh, superior Spider-Man in 801 the the last book of this arc the the aftermath if you will just a lot of really crazy stuff if you haven't read Spider-Man 800 I urge you I'm not a big Spider-Man reader but this book is great and then our other homework assignment was Doomsday Clock number five Again, spoiler alert, and real quick, we're going to just do this really fast. Batman and Eisman die as team up. Uh, <laughs> Rorschach helps, uh, it kind of sort of finds a Green Lantern that implies Justice Society is coming back. We got... We got Joker meets up with Mime and Marionette, and they confront each other, and there's a, there's a whole thing there. And then... The Joker's thugs beat up Batman and then offer Batman to the Joker at the end of the issue and the curtains close. That's the end of the issue. This one is, again, the Doomsday Clock stuff, which is being written by Johns, is great reading. It's just not, <laughs> this issue is not nearly as action-packed as Spider-Man was, but there's still a lot of really juicy stuff in this. So again, if you haven't read number five, Go read it. Why did you just listen to me spoil all the cool stuff? That's the end of comic books this week, though, guys. Thank you very much for watching all the way to the end. What did I miss? 
What should we talk about next week for comic books? Let me know in the comments down low. If, though, you want to go deeper in the conversation, there is a website you can check out, generallynerdy.net. That is the place that you can get all the things and the links to get the social media, or <clears throat> and the links to get your nerdy swag, or go find me on social medias, live tweeting, the E3 stuff, all of that is going on on the social medias. Check it out. Generallynerdy.net is the place. Or if you want more content, there is a Patreon, patreon.com slash generally nerdy. For just $1 a month, you basically double the amount of content that you get every month uh, for just a dollar. So check it out over on patreon.com slash generally nerdy. If you are new to this channel, though, definitely click that subscribe button. If you like this episode, click the like button. If you are falling behind in your nerd news and you want to catch up, Click or tap that box right there, right there, to the left of my face to do that. But before we do, before we click boxes and visit websites, guys, always, always remember, if it's generally nerdy, it's probably here.